Hello everyone. Today we are uh, still in our series, The War on Christ. I really feel like I needed to extend my teaching on demonology. I believe a lot of people have misinformation out there on the subject. And I think that we really need to go into more depth in understanding uh, more about demons and where they come from. I, I uh, showed a book last time by uh, Frank Hammond and Pigs in the Parlor. And he has many books on deliverance and, and he goes through a lot in this book on uh, certain types of del uh, deliverances and demons that plague people that get into the soul, get into the personality and they, uh, if they uh, torment or vex or even skew our personality to think more evil, to think more selfish, selfishness, have selfish uh, ambition and selfish desires. It uh, demons prey on uh, on our flesh because our flesh is uh, easily enticed and they uh they get into our flesh and they cause us to obsess or desire things that are forbidden and also desire things that in excess and so t sometimes things get out of control in our lives is because there is a demon spirit that is behind that certain appetite or sin that is driving that demon in the body and we are subject to that uh, demon when we participate in certain uh, desires and appetites and sins this is why uh, Yeshua commanded believers to fast because fasting stops the the control of demonic forces in our life uh, we get uh, we get delivered I believe initially at salvation I believe a lot of demons lift off of us when we come into this transitioning in into the kingdom of God and into this great salvation when we transition into uh, doing God's will there's a lot of desires and attitudes and formal life that that dissipates in our life but the Bible says that there are demons that cannot come out unless there are there are a, there is a prayer and fasting these things do not come out without prayer and fasting uh, we have to we have to examine our thoughts we got to examine our emotions we've got to examine uh, our personalities our attitudes and we've got to see what is the driving force, what is molding us, what is making us. Are we in contrary and contradiction to this word? Is the fruits of the Spirit actually manifesting in our lives? And so we've got to, the Bible says that we have to judge ourselves to see if we're in the faith. So we are to judge to see uh, if these things are embedded in our soul. When we see that these things are embedded, they are nothing to be terrified of. Yeshua has given us power through his name and through his blood to expel them. Even though a lot of demons uh, manifest, they manifest through breath. Sometimes we will go through uh, periods where there will be, uh, where we, uh, we will expel them through uh, just uh, sneezing, coughing, puking, uh, um, just burping. There's different, they, the, the, the exit way out of the body is through air. They're pneumatic. So when we are in, are encountered with the spirit, when we encounter the Holy Spirit and when we, when we repent of certain things and the Holy Spirit is leading us to, de to deliver ourselves or deliver someone else, we have to be sensitive to the spirit. There might be a manifestation of coughing and spitting and puking and a lot of air is being released out of the body because those spirits are leaving the premises. So in this book, 
it in the back it says it says uh, th uh, this book contains a wealth of practical information for the person interested in planning to engage in or actively engaged in the ministry of deliverance it is a practical handbook handbook offering valuable guidance as to determine how demons enter and i mentioned that last time through sin and are participating in sin and even being born in sin with generational curses if deliverance is needed uh, showing how a uh, practical way how to be delivered and the things to say and how to how to pray our way in uh, way into this deliverance uh, gives us a practical application on how to deliver ourselves and others how deliverance is accomplished for others and self, how to re retain your deliverance. That's the key. Once we are delivered, we've got to maintain our deliverance. And understanding group demons, which I mentioned last time, how demons that, uh, that are controlling us have a strong man, and then they have other lesser, stronger demons that associate with the stronger demon that resides in the soul. So the and they give a lot of examples in this book, pigs in the parlor, because our our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, and we are to we are to clean our temple. We are to uh, remove the defiling uh, and defilement and unclean spirits and the unclean things that we have done in the body. You know, sin uh, is the sin is it resides in our flesh and it's not sin is just not an attitude it's not just an action or a participation sin is just not something that we're tempted with but sin is a constant a uh, constant uh constant battle it's a constant uh warring within our members to submit to God's will. So sin resides. So sin is an entity and entities that reside in our human soul that we become well acquainted with and and we can't tend to coddle, we can't tend to make excuses for, we tend to overlook but sin and demons cannot be separated they are one and the same and when we uh, are uh, being tempted in sin or we and we have this desire to disobey or be be behave sinfully then that is usually uh, is in uh, is usually influenced by a demonic spirit that spirit is is uh, enticing you the Bible says that God tempts no one. He, uh, he tempts no one, but it, it's within our lust. It's within our it, within our nature that we are being tempted. We, God tempts no one, and he he is not our he. What he does is he allows the evil one to tempt us to get us. To, Oh, he, he t allows the enemy to tempt us so that we would become aware of these entities that are embedded in the soul. And so uh, only way that we know that they reside, reside in us is when they are aroused. So the Holy Spirit will, will remove himself for a season so that we will be tempted and tested by God. We be tempted and tested, but not by God Himself. But we'll be. T we, he allows this tempting and testing to uh, to take place, so that we would uh, we would uh, go to battle with that sin. We would go to battle with the uh, the the powers of darkness, and that we would expel these things, so that our temples can be sanctified and pure and acceptable unto Him. The Bible says in James 1, it says, uh, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. 
But every man is tempted when he is drawn away in his own lust and enticed. For when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So we, God doesn't tempt us, but he will allow us to be tempted by the, tempted by the evil one. I mean, we can see that all the patriarchs and all the disciples, even Peter, even Yeshua says that uh, Satan desires to sift you. That means he's desired to see what's inside of you, what, what, what lust it resides in you, what entity resides in you so that he can cause him to stumble and fall. But if we do not go through the testings, if we don't go through the temptings of the enemy, if we don't be, if we're not going through the purification and Satan is a purifier, then we will not know what resides in us. We would not know, we don't know the lust that embeds in us. And if we're, and God puts us through uh, battles so that these things can be removed so he can advance us in the kingdom. He can't advance us and give us responsibilities in the kingdom and, and put us over uh, certain individuals to disciple them or minister to them unless we go through the tempting stages ourselves. We have to remove these things from us. We've got to know what make makes us click that makes us uh who we are that may that motivates us and sometimes what motivates us is is in 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 rebellion or in disobedience to god because god is calling us to be selflessness he's t he's calling us to sacrifice and he's causing us to put this flesh to death and the desires thereof so that we when he ask us to go and minister on his behalf that we will not fall into temptation and sin and and, and when sin is conceived it's very hard to retrieve it's very hard to come back um, to to the bible says in hebrews doesn't it say that we trample if we go back into sin we trample the blood of yeshua underfoot and it is harder to come back from that because the more responsibility the more that we taste of the goodness of God the more that we taste of the worlds to come the the supernatural and the power and the manifestation of God's presence his giftings his spirits the more we we get involved in that and we fall in temptation then it's harder for us to come back from that if we fall in temptation and we sin and we and we continue in that sin and we don't recognize it then it's harder to come back to faith it's harder to come back to that that uh that responsibility that god has put upon us you know the bible says that we were, we need to be without reproach we, we we need to be without sin we need to be we did we need to be made perfect and God. So that's why that he he doesn't just endow us with power. He doesn't endow us with responsibilities until we are going through the testings and that we uh we get purged ourselves because he knows that as soon as he uh deliverance comes as soon as power comes then the enemy's devices get get a little bit uh tougher to get through. His attacks get a little bit tougher to get through, and 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 his and his uh, uh, his devices and his and his uh, uh, and his war plan against you becomes very real. <laughs> mm -hmm. And 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 he and he the Bible's you know when the Bible says that what when the sons of Sceva went out to deliver. You know, they were using the power and authority that was given to them, but they were not prepared. And because they were not prepared to deliver these people that were demon possessed and the, and these demons overcame them. And they said, Paul, I know, and Yeshua, I know, but we do not know you because they had not gone through the testing, the light 
of Yeshua's, the light of the gospel of Yeshua was not yet manifested in them. The presence of God had not yet illuminated their soul in the spirit realm. They were still uh, in defilement. They were still, they themselves needed to go through that same purging. They, they themselves needed to be equipped. They themselves need to go through the experiences themselves before they just, they, they just see the power manifesting in the apostles. They see the power manifesting in, in believers, but they don't know what went behind the scenes to get that power. They don't know what they had to go through, the cost it took, what they had to give up, and, and, and the fights and the battles and the struggles they went through to gain that power. So they, people want to jump on the bandwagon and want to go and, and want to deliver people and want to, and want to work in all kinds of miracles and signs and wonders because they want notoriety they want attention on themselves they want to see they want people to see them and not see god and th this is why god says you got to remove all self before i can endow you with power you got to remove all agenda all everything that you you want well because what i bring is going to give you attention but it's also going to give you battle and there is a fine line between uh, between good and evil and and if you get into working what which was good and doing which was which is good but then you want to usurp it for yourself and you fall in temptation then you you open yourself for a snare and it's and like i said in hebrews 6 it's very hard to come back from that and that's why god does not just give us all this power and all this authority and all this working in signs of miracles because he is looking for vessels that are willing to go through the purification of satan's uh trials just like job right here he went through the testings uh to to be elevated in god to, to, to give, God was giving him more authority, giving him a more position in heaven. See, because if you read Job, Job, you know, he could only go so far. His sacrifices only went so far. His, his, uh, his devout love for God was distant, but God wanted to draw him near to him. And so, but he what he had all these things. He had a lot of hangups that I go through in this book that kept him carnal, kept him on this on the natural plane, just doing uh, religious works and and just going through the the uh, you know the mechanics of religion. But so God had to strip him of all that religious notoriety because. Job was well, he was a priest in his town. He was a, a minister. He was, he was, he had a good reputation. He was looked up by in the community. Men seen, people seen him as a man of God. They, he had a great reputation. And, and so the, these things, uh, he, you know, he secured himself with. His righteous works and his righteous acts secured him, but it never drawn him near to God because flesh was still in operation. Flesh was still getting what flesh wanted. Flesh was getting the, the gratitude and the gratification that flesh wants because people recognized him as being a, a, a somebody but when he went through his testings and he had boils and he was stripped with all his blessings he was he became a byproduct and a reproach to his neighbors and people looked upon him at in, in disgust but and he and he mourned and he wept over this because his whole life was changed his whole life was was 
was being afflicted. His whole life was removed from him. Everything he, he put his security in was gone. And God had to strip him so he could elevate him. Because it says in Job that, you know, you can only go so far. You can only come so far with me. You can, I can't bring you into my presence. I can't give you uh, the authority and the power and what I want to endow you with. I want to bless you with heavenly blessings. I can't do that as long as you stay carnal, as long as you stay in this religion that is just outward expressions of religion. Acts, you were doing everything that was right. You were doing everything that I, that was required of you by the law, but it couldn't bring you into my presence. It couldn't get you to the heavenly host. So I had to, I had, what did he do? He, he had to, he had to afflict the flesh. He had to, he had to, uh, he had to, he had to remove all security, all dependency on this world. He had to come in full dependency on God. So the afflictions of Job show us that we too must go through the afflictions in our soul. We must go through the purging processes in our soul. They're difficult. They're hard. And God in his mercy does release us, you know, from, from demonic presence. We do, I mean, when we come into salvation, you know, this is why we get a change of heart. This is why we, be, we become lifted. Some people's burdens become lifted off of them at, immediately when they come into salvation. But we have to understand that the process doesn't stop there. The process must continue. And it will always continue for the rest of your life. Because we can't just clean, we can't just cleanse ourselves once and expect us to never become dirty again. We live in a very filthy world, and we are surrounded by filthy people, and we are surrounded by filthy entities, and we're going to become unclean. We're going to be influenced. We're going to be demonized. We're going to uh, be engaged with, with demonic forces at all times. So we're constantly have to be washed with the, uh, the word. We constantly got to be washed with the spirit. We're constantly have to be clean up. We constantly have to expel the things that get into our minds and in our attitudes. We're constantly, this is the warfare. It's a continuous warfare until Yeshua comes back. Until, until he makes all his enemies under his feet. And until then, we are going through, we're going through cleansing. We're going through, it's just like a newborn baby that comes out of a womb. And what do the first thing the doctor does? You know, the baby's just got all this slime on them and, they got this blood and all this nastiness upon them from being and living in a womb and developing in the womb. But once the baby is delivered, the first thing they do is clean up the baby. They give the baby a bath. This is what this is such a type and shadow of how God takes us out of the world. He takes us from, from being in this filth and engaging in this filth. And he, he's birthing you into the kingdom of God. Because we're being born again of the Spirit. And what does he do? He cleans us up. He, he, the first initial thing he does is starts to bathe us. But if we, if we just continued in that one-time bathing when the doctor comes and the nurse comes. And they bathe that child. And clean, and clean that child and give it to the mother. If the mother and father does not bathe that child, that child will become stink. If that child will start to stink. It will start to manifest sores. It will start to, it will start to have rashes. It will start to have a flaky skin. And it will start having all these bumps that will, that will develop from, from the, the, the neglect of just not bathing. 
So, it, you know, it's our responsibility as, as believers and then people who are being born into faith to constantly equip the saints to bathe themselves. And this is why we've got people like Frank Hammond and Deliverance Ministries that are going out and teaching people and teaching uh, more mature believers how to, to cleanse ourselves from these defiling elements because they can't do it themselves. They're not mature enough. These babies in Christ are not mature enough to, to, to bathe themselves. So it takes somebody more mature in the faith to be able to do that. And God knows that. But there's got to be a time when we develop maturity, spiritually maturity, in us that we cease from sin. We cease from the participation of sin. But we also have to have discernment when spirits come and start to try to manifest themselves in our life again. When they start to, uh, when, when influences start to, to capture our mind. When, and in our attitudes and, and where Satan wants to come and sift us in our members to get us to fall into temptation. You know, you know, he, and I went through many, many journeys, many times where the enemy tried to sift me and I was fine. I was doing just great without that sifting. I was happy. I was, I was, I was content. I was not I was not looking for anything. Does that make sense? I wasn't putting myself in that place to be sifted. But opportunities arise. Situations happen that we become tempted and we start and and those things that we that lay dormant in us start to arouse themselves and we start to be tempted and we start to be sifted in our faith and in our belief and our desires is our desires going to be uh, you know are going to uh, override my faith and and i did not have these issues before then then god changed my situations and my circumstances where they became very, very alive in me. And I had to go to battle. And I had to fight to keep my flesh under control. Keep what was important to me. My relationship with God was more important to me. My, my love for Him, knowing what He brought me through initially, going through the initial deliverances in my life kind of settled me kind of you put the it, it, it kind of implanted something inside of me that hey I never want to go back there never want to go uh, and dabble in darkness which I never got into the occult I never got into like vile sin but we live in a sinful world and I got complacent. I got, I had apathy. I didn't, I love God, but I, well, he wasn't first priority. And I allowed the world to influence me and I started living and thinking, acting like the world. Claiming I was a Christian, claiming I was a believer. And when, and when sifting came, when, and when times where God was going to deliver me from from uh, from these things that were inside of me, these things start to arouse. Things started to manifest generationally. Uh, it could have been all kinds of came from, from very come from very different avenues and different places. But Satan is at war with you, and he's at war with your mind, and he's at war with your soul. And so, thank God for that initial deliverance. Because when God started calling me out 20 years ago, even though I was raised in church, like I said, I was a carnal Christian. I only at many, I, I mean, I would feel the presence of God. I was filled with the Spirit at a young age. I, I constantly was working and operating in the Christian life. I always, when I became a Christian, when I became an adult, my life was surrounded by, by all things Christian. 
I didn't watch sec a lot of secular uh, stuff, just your my you know, minor things. I didn't really get into the deep things of the secular TV. I never was big on soap operas or any kind of, you know, that kind of lifestyle. I kept kept my movies that, you know, around PG, PG-13. I always kind of had a safeguard around me, even from a child. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I always tried to, uh, you know, try not to get into t anything that was going to, you know, I raised it. I was raised in, in a church. I was raised in with parents that did deliverance ministry. I knew these things were real. So there was always safeguards to keep me from going too far in sin. But that, 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 but that doesn't negate that I li I still was in sin because my heart was not on fire for God. And I still wanted the things of the world. And I still pursue the things of the world. And that was my first, my, my you know, my, my desires. That was my, my, my first, uh, what you call my initial desire or my initial uh that took precedence in my life. That was that was what took precedence in my, you know, trying to obtain in this life, trying to uh, gain worldly possession, trying to you know succeed in this life. So, you know, even though in itself it's not bad to succeed in itself, but when it becomes your God, when it becomes your only focus in life. When it becomes your only source in life, that, mm -hmm. that's all that you care about. And you only go to church and you only feel the presence once a week, maybe because you're in prayer and worship. But most of your life is just living for yourself because I didn't have anybody to teach me what it meant to be a Christian, what it meant to be a follower of Christ. So sin, sin came creeping in my, in my life, you know, and so, and I, you know, I, so I was back and forth in my walk with God, it was back and forth until 20 years ago and God really got a hold of me because there was things that opened doors because I wasn't guarded, I wasn't protected by the blood, I was living carnally, I got a major attack on my life. And because of that attack, I had nothing but come. I had nothing. I had no. I had no. Um, I, I had nothing. No hope. I had nothing else but to turn to God. There was nothing that I could do but turn to God because there was nothing in in this life that could help me. This was a spiritual attack on my life. And it came from dark forces, and it was attacking my mind and my emotions, making me very fearful. I was very, uh, I had, I had, was, was come, I was combated with uh, demonic uh, imagery in my mind constantly, and I had no relief. And it was continuously, it was affecting my dr uh, my uh, dreams. It was affecting my night. I couldn't sleep. For four months, and I go through my testimony in this book, the four months I was in t literal torment, literal torment, because the enemy came in some, some avenue, some way he, ca he got in, and it, it, it was like a split second, it was like, a, it was, I felt it come into me, I felt the attack, I, it was like, it had a, it wasn't gradual, it wasn't something that was gradually happened to me that a lot of people find this. Oh, I'm a Christian and they gradually fall into sin. That's not how it was for me. It was an immediate attack on my life. And I, and I had no control of my mind. I had no control of my emotions. I had no control. I mean, I literally was praying without ceasing. I would to keep my mind and keep my kids and keep everything around me harmoniously co you know coexisting with these people and keep it so that people would not uh, uh know what was internally what was going on with me so i i kept a good front but i was battling 
within my soul. I was battling within my mind. And I, because my kids were young at that time and I didn't want to bring fear upon them. So I had, you know, life doesn't stop because you're going through something. <laughs> you have to continue. I had a job. I had to continue with my job. I had to continue with my raising my children. I had to continue to try to, uh, you know, uh, you know, get, get along with my husband. Know my husband, knowing that I was going through something, but the dude couldn't put his finger on it because he wasn't spiritual. He wasn't a Christian. He couldn't figure it out. So he just kind of, what did he do? He just left me for myself. He kind of, it's like, he just left me in, the, like, you need to deal with this. I'll, I'm going to go sleep in the back bedroom. I'm going to work like, you know, 12 hour days. I'm, I mean, I'm just going to try to, you know, escape from this situation. And so I went through, and so that escaping from that situation, I wasn't planning on doing my testimony, but the, I felt like the Lord was leading me to it. So I'm going to kind of go with it. So anyways, I was all alone for four months, all alone, severely attacked, severely had imagery severely my emotions were heightened i could i was anxiety stricken i was i had fear i couldn't sleep i was uh could not eat i lost you know 10 pounds within a month because i i mean i was just constantly in this warfare prayer and everything that i learned everything i learned as a child this is why it's so important that people uh, you know, instill the word of God in their children, you know, because it took the word of God that kept me sane. It took the word of God to keep me mentally stable. And I, t I went like 10 years without really opening up my scriptures, really getting into my scriptures. And I just kind of live in life, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses, trying to, to uh, you know, make my life uh, a better here on earth, you know. And uh, until that attack happened, it came, it just came suddenly. It came suddenly out of nowhere. And I was fighting for my life. I was fighting for my sanity. I was fighting for my emotions to keep it at bay, keep it in stable. I was fighting. And everything that I learned, everything I learned from my, from my youth, the Lord was bringing it to my remembrance. And I was fighting these devils that were rising up inside of me. That was that were manifesting in me. They were manifesting in my. I could see them in my eyes. I could see them in my my flesh. I could see them. They were tormenting me. They were trying to get me in fear. And so I, I every time I, you know, I I got to the point where they didn't make me fearful anymore, because the word of God started to take its root in my life. And every time I would speak, I would speak to these things and I would speak the word of God and they would have to settle down. But I wasn't delivered. I wasn't delivered, but it was a battle for four months. And I was like, Lord, I'm so tired. I'm so weary of this battle. I am, I, you know, to the point where I couldn't even work. I couldn't even, finally, uh, I finally said, cause I couldn't sleep, would go days without sleeping. And I finally uh, said, I'm not going to work no more. <laughs> I've had enough. I can't work it anymore. And so I, I would call in and I'm, I was calling in to my job and telling them I'm quitting after I've been there for several years. And because I was there and I had a good reputation and I was loyal to this company and loyal to these doctors and they knew that I was going through something, my husband interceded and he, and he spoke to the head doctor that I was working for at the time, told him that I was going through something. And he said, well, you know, just let her take a leave of absence. Her, you know, when she gets through her, whatever she's going through, you know, we, we have a job for her when she comes back, you know, just let it, let her, you know, you know, take a medical leave. And they gave me a, a, a leave of absence so that I could deal with these things. And, and so 
even though my husband didn't understand, he really was trying to stay away from the situation. But I knew, I knew it was a spiritual thing. And so I prayed and I prayed without ceasing. And I thank God, God left that door open for me to go back to work. But I, I took that time and I started to pray and I started to see God. And I really got an understanding what it meant to be buried with Christ. See, all my life, these are words that we say. These are words that are like cliches in our life. And, and I did not know. I was baptized when I was younger. I, I knew, but, but I didn't know what the meaning it meant to be baptized. And I told the Lord that day, that day that I was getting delivered, I said, Lord, I said, I want, I, I was going, I was invited to go uh, to my dad's church. They, you know, he was getting to the Messianic movement at that time. And, and they, um, they were had a, a Sukkot. It was, it was during, uh, during the feast days. It was during uh, the fall feast. It was during September. It was Labor Day weekend. Actually, it's this weekend. This is the weekend I was delivered. And that, and it was during the, during this time of the feast, I think it was John Taruma. <laughs> And I, and I said, you know, I, I didn't know anything about the fall feast. I didn't even know anything about the Hebrew roots. I didn't know anything. And all I knew, and I said, you know, I, they were having, uh, you know, different events that happened. And I was invited to come up that weekend to, uh, to celebrate with them. And I, and I said, you know, and they were doing baptism. And I said, Lord, I said, I want to go there and I want to be baptized because I want to be buried with you in Christ. I want to be buried. And, and that really became real to me. And that moment, I had music going on in the background. And, you know, the Lord does things strange. And there was a song that came down uh that way i was playing by ron cannoli when we bow down at your feet lord jesus and i had that on a repeat that was because we had dvd we had cds at that time and you i had a cd player and i was playing it in repeat in that song and i was just worshiping god that day and and praying and say lord i'm going to be baptized i am serious because i i didn't have no way out i was being tormented i was being vexed i was being i was being uh you know totally you know I, I mean words can't express what i was going through nobody knows what i went through nobody could even understand what i was going through nobody outside of me could figure out what was going on to me. I was having such an inner struggle. I don't even like to talk about it. It's been 20 years. I have not talked about it once because it's not something I glory in. It's not something I glorify in at all. I hate it. I hate it that these things happened to me. I hated it. And um, so I uh, prayed and and I was I was doing housework around the house and, and the Lord, and there was a word that came up out of, out of my belly because I was praying without ceasing. I was, the, the, my tongues, I was praying in tongues. I was praying in the spirit. And I, sorry, I had to give me a tissue. But I was praying, I was cleaning house and a, a voice came up inside of me because I was, I was praying you know, the spirit was praying in me and I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God that I was, uh, I, you know, was filled at a very young age and understood it. And as soon as I started warfaring and when the things that I laid aside, Bible reading and time in prayer, man, they resurfaced. They resurfaced. I started remembering things. Things were coming up to my remembrance. Scriptures that had lay dormant inside of me for so long that I, you know, had not, I wasn't like well equipped. So I knew it was God. God was with me the whole time that I was going through my battle. But he allowed me to go through this situation. And he didn't like immediately deliver me. He didn't like immediately take me away from my affliction. You know, I went to the doctor and sought, sought help through a, a physician. You know, they put me on magnesium. They told me to, you know, uh, they take some antidepressant medicine 
So they were tr giving me samples of antidepressant medicines, which made it worse. <laughs> did, did not help anything. It actually suppressed me. It actually suppressed my will. See, I, w I was better combating these things that were coming at me, the torment and the vexing of my mind and, and the thoughts and the imagery. I was able to, to combat them a lot better when my, when my will was engaged. When I was able to use with the Spirit of God, with my will, able to engage in this fight. But as soon as they put me on these antidepressants, especially this effector, it was called, uh, I, I was weak. I had no life in me. I could, I had no like way to battle these things. I was just feeling like I was being overcome by my thoughts and by my feelings and by my emotions because the medicine was actually suppressing the inner strength inside of me. And so I was like, I took him for a couple, a day, a week, and I was like, I'm getting off of these things. I'd rather deal with them, you know, with, with an inner strength than try to suppress the, these things. And so I, so I got off of them. And I just went to battle. But that day when, you know, that I was, it was that weekend. We, it was a Labor Day weekend that I was making preparations to go to my dad's uh, church, which was, uh, what, five hours away from where I lived. And the kids were going to be off from school that weekend. I was home, uh, you know, I was home that day, of course, because I wasn't working. And, uh, and I was praying and I was seeking God and, 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 and out of, out of nowhere, there was a voice that came up inside of me and it said, fear not. It wasn't my voice. It came out of my mouth, but it was like separate from my voice. It's like, I got a, a word that came up and I th thought in my head, I'm like, what am I not supposed to fear? <laughs> I had no clue that I knew that I was attacked, but I did not know that these entities were, I, I kept, I kept thinking, I know now that these entities, I could see them manifest, but you know how your mind does not want to accept that you have evil spirits. I mean, especially, especially me, I was totally fearful of the whole of everything, every anything demonic, anything spiritual, as far as demon goes, you know, I like it's totally afraid. So in my mind, to keep me some, you know, sound and have some kind of, you know, not to get caught up in fear, I just kind of, I kind of just suppress that idea, that thought that demons were actually in my flesh and that I was having to be delivered. <laughs> And so, and I also want to make the comment that, you know, even when at the whole four months that I was going through this, I mean, I would go to church and I would go to different, and I was in, and there would be a fear that would rise up in me. It's like, I, I didn't want to be at church. I didn't want to be around godly people. I didn't want to be because these devils did not want to be delivered. So I, I was constantly, even though I wanted to be free, I, th I, th I thought it was more medically, emotionally. I thought I was going through anxiety, depression, maybe had a medical problem with me. I, you know, I, I, you know, I knew it was spiritual in the back of my mind, but never wanted to accept it. Does that make sense? I never wanted to accept that it was, uh, w w was demonic because I had no idea what demons were. I didn't know, I, mean, I always knew what the movies portrayed demons were, but I didn't know what, what, how, uh, what demons, how, you know, where, where they came from. And so, and I think a lot of people are afraid of, of demons is because they, they don't know where they come from. They don't, they, they have a fear of them because they don't know exactly what they are. And, and what they come from and how and how and how they reside in your temple and your body and your flesh and and how they get in through sin and sin and and demons are one and the same and i'm going to go into the teaching of that so i didn't know these things so the fear of the unknown pretty much plagued my life you know 
And so I just tried not to get, you know, around people that were, especially, I didn't want to get around you guys. I wasn't living, uh, you know, a very Christian life. I was not, you know, and so I did, so I didn't want to be around godly people either at the point. I didn't want to be, and, and so when this was happening, even before this happened, you know, my life wasn't. Uh, uh, conducive to walking in God righteousness and in godly attributes and doing godly things. So, but when this all happened and I, I couldn't, I couldn't go anywhere else but to God, things started changing. My desires started to change. My heart desire. I wanted to be, I, I didn't want to go to church because I didn't want them. To, I was afraid. I had a fear of it something was going to manifest or I'm going, you know, I was, I, I, you know, how, how the enemy plays on your mind. And so I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to be around because these things were controlling my emotions and my mind and my thoughts and my, and I had just a lot of fear rising up inside of me and I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't have no support. I didn't have a, a godly husband that would or to, could pray for me. I didn't have it, my my parents were five hours away. I didn't really have anybody to lean upon during this time that I was what I was you know this time of a very you know of difficulty and and terrifying circumstances. So I tried to suppress it as much as I possibly can until I couldn't suppress it anymore. Until I needed to get relief. Until I needed to get things. But anyways, that day, right before we left to go to Lubbock, uh, that the word of the Lord said, do not fear. And he came in. I was praying. I had that music on repeat. And I can just sense the presence of God walking in my room. Yeshua himself came. And I can sense that he was laying there. I was laying there at his feet. I didn't see an image. I didn't see it. I just felt the presence. I just knew he was there. And one by one, he started to tell me in my mind, projecting thoughts in my mind, like, you know, this is what's plaguing you. This is what's plaguing you. And start to expel them. And I started to name them. And when I would name them, that, that demon, then my body would go limp and I would spit them up. And I, and I would spit them in the toilet and I would little all night hours by myself laying on the bathroom floor with Yeshua, his presence, his silhouette, his, his, his I didn't see a silhouette, I didn't see it, but his, just knowing I was at his feet, knowing that his, he was right there with me and he was projecting the thoughts of these demonic forces that were intruding in my life. He didn't tell me where it came from. He didn't say that I, you know, I was cursed or I had, you know, it came from a family curse. He didn't say that I had a witchcraft of spirit put on me. He didn't say, he didn't tell me how I got them, but he told me which demons were plaguing me. And, and I went through everything that I can possibly, anything that came in my mind that, that I needed to be delivered from. That's what I got delivered from. And my body would go limp. And I would expel them through my breath. Through spitting and gagging. And projecting uh, stuff out. I wasn't puking, but I was projecting stuff out of my mouth. And uh, and I went through this for all night long. My, my kids were knocking at the door saying, Mom, are you okay? Are you alright? I said, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. My husband was took the kids off and he slept in the back room and I all night was praying all night and I got up grabbed my kids and I took off to Lubbock and then that that's where I found the support and they prayed me through my mom and my sister-in-law and the people that surrounded me and they prayed for me so I could come out of this and I'm, I'm I've held this in in my testimony because it's not something I'm proud of. I don't know how they got there. I don't know why I was plagued. But God knew and he knew that there was an open door that came in. That something, something got in. Unannounced, unaware. And it was going to destroy me if it wasn't for Yeshua. It would have destroyed me. I could not take it anymore. And I would tell you 
that I had my mom come and stay with me when, for, for about a week because I was terrified. I just went through a deliverance, something that I never wanted to experience, never wanted to deal with in my, in my lifetime, never thought I would have to go through. And I was terrified that I actually, that these things were coming out of me. And, but as time went by, God strengthened me. He has, he's made that fear go away that I don't have no fear of them anymore. Because there's a power. The Holy Spirit is so much more powerful than those things. If you just yield to him and you can be buried in baptism, this flesh of sin, this body of sin does not have to control your life. And that you can have a newness of life. A newness of life in Christ. And I was, at that moment, I was changed. I was changed I, I, the, 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 the world around me was changed. The, I, I remember saying, boy, things are so much brighter. Things are so much brighter. The, the, the world was so much brighter af after that moment. I never really took in consideration the beauty of, of God's earth or the beauty of nature. I mean, I loved it. It was great, but I never really, like, really... It, it, you know, it didn't really have its impact on my life until that day. Everything was beautiful. Everything was, was lovely. Everything was great. I had such a love. I just, there was a love that bubbled inside of me. There was, a, there was a new life that was developed inside of me that I had never experienced until that very moment. Even through my lifetime of, of being in church, and, and being around Christianity, I never experienced this kind of life and this kind of love and this kind of, uh, uh, of, a, of, of joy. I mean, to, and, and actually to feel freedom. You know, everything that was ever plagued me that I never even considered as, uh, you know, all through my life, these things started lifting off of me. Things that I, I, I had lived with, things that I, you know, like, for instance, perfection. I, I was OCD in certain things. I always liked a perfect house and liked a perfect, uh, you know, environment. And I would work myself to death to, you know, work a full-time job, take care of children, and try to live this perfect life. And I tried to keep a perfect home and try to do everything perfect where the spirit of perfection was lifted off of me that day, that day of deliverance. So there was things that were, that, that I just lived my life that thinking that this is who I was. This was my personality. This is what my preferences were actually a spirit that was controlling me. And even though I like things to be clean and I like to clean house, I don't have that, uh, that obsession to have everything in my life perfect. The, the, it should, we, we take for granted the things that we live with, things that drive us, the things that motivate us, and thinking that these things are, uh, are somehow uh, acceptable, but actually there's an evil spirit that, it, that is, is actually driving them. Even though being perfect or trying to strive to be perfect in itself is not bad. But when there's an evil spirit that is, is, is at the root of it or is, or it is the, the driving force you're not, and, and is controlling that part of your personality or that part of that preference, then it becomes evil. And, and that's why we have to examine ourselves. We've got to examine the thing, the little things of our lives, and we've got to make the accommodations in our life uh, to to line ourselves up with the Word of God and allow the Holy Spirit. Something like that, you know, being having this perfected spirit, the spirit of perfection. In me, would, I would never re repent on my own. I would never think that it was evil in itself. So I would have never, uh, you know, took it, took that in consideration of of it being uh, controlled by an evil spirit until the Holy Spirit showed me, and and uh, because when He delivered me, when Yeshua delivered me that day, 
He was removing everything. He was giving me like a newborn baby. He was delivering me and cleansing me from all the all these unclean spirits, all these things that were plaguing me. He was giving me a bath. He was sanctifying me and washing me that day from everything generationally and and things that I had adopted in my life. You know, there, I was there was so much that lifted from me there was such a burden that was lifted from me and i could live free and now i can live free now i can i can uh be i can clean my house i can i can do work and operate uh in 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 the, in the balance in the right and with the right heart with the right motive without being controlled by an evil spirit and now i can enjoy the the things that i like because now they are not they're they're not obsessions they're not they're not making me miserable they don't affect my attitude if if things are not perfect i don't i don't crumble under pressure anymore because these because these things are the things that control our lives and so this is why it's so important that we must be clean here a christian girl someone that was raised in church someone that knew something and never was in the occult, never was, never watched scary movies, never had, you know, never was in fornication, never had anything that I could point my finger at and say, that is what plaguing me. But I had a, a host of demons that resided in me that I had, that, that controlled my life and that were in my flesh thinking that they were, uh, just normal way of life, normal ways of behaviors, part of and part of my personality. Mm -hmm. And knowing that these were actually demons that were inside of me that had to be lifted. Even though there was uh, these tormenting spirits that came in. But it took this situation of being vexed that came through an avenue I do not know. Uh, that, that took me on a journey of even being delivered more in my life and understanding how uh, we're constantly being delivered. It's a constant salvation. He does deliver us. He does, you know, he, he saves us and he continues to save us and he continues to deliver us. It's not a one-time uh, cleansing, but it's a, it's a continuation of being cleansed. And it's a continuation of allowing the Holy Spirit to, to reveal these things to us because we get involved and we get around things that are unclean, that get into our soul and get into our mind, that we have to take authority over. That is why the Bible says in Genesis, and I wrote this in my book, my testimony. I wasn't planning on speaking it, but before you can... Speak on demonology before you can uh, instruct anybody in demonology. Before you can have an opinion on demonology, you must know what you're what you're saying. You must you must experience it. See, God allowed me to experience because I speak from experience. I don't speak from an intellect. Or a theology, or a, or a uh, or some kind of education that has been given to me on the subject. I speak from experience. I speak from going through a twenty-year journey with God, knowing where where these came from, what happened to me, what I myself went through to be able to inform others. And not to let others, uh, you know, to be, uh, to warn them this and to teach them that these things are not to be in fear of. When you have Yeshua, when you have Jesus, when you have the saving power residing in you, when you have the Holy Spirit residing in you, you have nothing to fear. God said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. We have nothing to fear if the Holy Spirit is working and operating us because his job is to remove us from those defiling elements. But we have to be, 
we have to we have to realize and we have to be willing participants to be able to go through the deliverance we have to be well informed and we have to know what's going on or we will shun from it just like i did i shunned from it i was scared of it i was i i accepted the hollywood uh you know percept uh depiction of it I accepted the way I thought, you know, people's heads spin. I, you know, I was never with you guys. Y'all did y'all's deliverances with people privately. I was never with you guys. I just knew by testimonies. So I feel like that's another thing. It should be a private matter. And Yeshua was very, very good about making sure that this was a private matter for me. He will never humiliate you. He will never embarrass you. Even though when I would go to church and I felt like I was going to, something was going to manifest or something, I was someone was, it was never time. And God and the Holy Spirit knew that I was like, I don't, I don't want to, these things to be, I didn't want to be confront them with another person. Does that mean I did not want to be a spectacle? That's the one thing I did not want. I did not want to be a spectacle, and I didn't want to be uh, embarrassed. And so he knew that from knowing who I was and he, this is why he did it in my home. This is why I was on, you know, in my house, on, you know, in my bathroom with the door shut privately, you know, uh, going through the deliverance. He personally delivered me because I did not want to go through the humiliation of being in the embarrassment of it. You know, I, because I, many times, that's why I, I would, the fear of it would uh, keep me away from church. It would keep me away from people that actually had the, you know, the anointing to deliver because I was afraid. I didn't want, and those spirits inside of me didn't want to be delivered either. So they kept that fear heightened inside of me. So where, so it was like a, a, a you know, a, a joint effort to keep me bound. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, but as soon as I realized that they were demons, I was going through a deliverance I, and, and all fear left me. I had no fear that day. I was so completely relaxed, totally just calm as calm can be. Totally. There was nothing, uh, elaborate or dramatic about it. I was, it was very, just very, just letting the breast go. It wasn't nothing. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't contorting or having any kind of convulsions. And not to say that that doesn't happen. I didn't have any of that. I wasn't, in, I, it was very, very, I didn't get really fearful until after it was all gone, after it was done. Does that make sense? After the whole deliverance, after my mind caught up with what was happening to me, then the fear of that, oh my gosh, that what just happened to me? What did I just go through? Then the enemy tried to attack me, but the difference between between the enemy attacking me now and attacking me then was they were outside of me. They were not in. It was not an internal struggle anymore. I they they couldn't come into my mind. They made they, well they could get into my thoughts, but being it having the real images in your mind, feeling like it was you, that was you know, that had no control. You felt like you had no control of yourself. You had no control of your own mind. Now I could have, I was, even when the enemy attacked me, I had power, I had control. I could shut it down. I could tear down all imaginations, cast down imaginations. Every stronghold that tries to exalt itself to have the knowledge of God, I could, the, the warfare was no longer inside, it was outside of me. And it started immediately because as soon as, you know, the enemy tried to get back in, it was just a different, it was a different, like the paradigm had shifted. There was no longer like, in my, they were not engaging in, in all my, all the faculties of my life. Does that make sense? They were not get, engaging in my mind. They were not get, engaging in my emotions. They were, they were not engaging. They were outside of me trying to press in. Does that make sense? But they were inside of me trying, trying to control, you know, my senses and everything that's, you know, inside of me that we 
hold on to. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because inside we have our will, we have our thoughts, we have our emotions, and, and we can we can shift these things in our life. We can quit thinking about these things. We can we can stop feeling the way we feel. We can we can change our direction because we had that navigating senses of our will to to change our thoughts. We can we can we you know the Bible says think on these things. Think think on things that are holy, things that are pure, things that are lovely. See, I had I didn't I didn't have that in me to to control that. Do you see? Now I can control it. Now I can shift my thoughts to things that are holy and pure and righteous. But when I was going through that torment, I was I was useless. I I, I mean I was a victim of whatever the enemy wanted to put in my thoughts and in my thing. I couldn't control it. Does that make sense? And so that's why they were outside of me, and they were no longer in inner space. They were in outer space. They were outside of me. And the warfare was different. The enemy does still come and he tries to attack and he still tries to. But now the I have the inner strength of God inside of me that pushes them back, holds them and forces them out. And even when they get in my soul, like if I something happens and I, I'm being, I know when the, uh, an enemy is trying to vex me, you know, mm -hmm. And then I expel it because expelling them not necessarily means that they're inside of you, but sometimes they're plaguing your mind. You're demonized, and they and they they are released the same way. This is the way God shows us that we are being plagued number one by a demon spirit, and that we are free from it. There's got to be an, a, a, re, a something happens to show us that we are free. We can't just imagine we are free. There's got to be something that shows us that we are free. That's why we may, uh, we may, our bodies may react. Our, we may, you know, we may cough, we may sneeze, we may, we may burp, we may, uh, we, we may jerk. We may move our hands. We may, you know, we may shake a little bit because we're being, those things are being lifted off of us. But it's not you that's doing it. It's the spirit inside of you, like taking you and shaking you off from those spirits. Do you see what I mean? And and it's really like you, the Holy Spirit is like, shake it off. And you'll shake it off and you can feel that that spirit leave. Do you know what I mean? Because you have to, because they, they're, they, get, they get so controlling in your life that you have to go, uh, you have to, you know, shake a little bit. You, you know, you may have to, whatever it takes to be free, do what you got to do to get free, you know, and you, and you got to know that you're free. And by, by allowing the Holy Spirit to move your body in a certain way, will, will, uh, inform you and let you know that you're no longer plagued with that, de that devil. So you don't have to receive from that enemy in anymore because you've been set free. So this is how God works. This is how God works in my life. This is how God has worked through me in my deliverance. And through through prayer and through things that I go through in life, I pray. And I feel like if I'm getting uh, oppressed, I start to start to go through, to warfare. And sometimes I, I will shake off things. Sometimes I will move. Sometimes I will, uh, you know, start to cough or I'll start to breathe. Uh, you know, in a way that is expelling them. And so, and I'll know that I am being uh, attacked. I know that I'm being influenced by a demon. But a lot of people want to take their religion and they want to just make it all beautiful and all pretty and so all supreme and blind and just being this wonderful thing. They don't want to deal with with the the hardcore things that we go through and that's how i was too i did not want to i wanted religion was religion church was church god was god but in me these things were not impossible they, they, they could not happen to me i'm a good person why are these things happening to me i'm doing all the right things i don't do anything that opens the door to the occult why is these things happening to me because you want everything used to be pristine 
prestige and, and Vallon and Purdy and beautiful and wonderful. But we live in, uh, in, we live in darkness and we live amongst darkness and we're surrounded with darkness and it's not beautiful. It's a hard thing. And so I had to come to a realization of that. And, you know, this is why the Bible says in Galatians uh, 6, and, uh, starting with the 7, 9, it says, Knowing that whatsoever good thing, well, uh, let me see. I might have put the wrong scripture. Hold on. What well, you know the the Bible the Bible says that God is not mocked, but those that that uh, sow to the flesh will reap corruption, but those that sow to the Spirit will reap life everlasting. And so whatever we sow to our flesh, we are going to reap the consequences. And any time that we are working in the flesh, any time we're operating the flesh, any time we are engaging in the flesh, we're going and sowing to the flesh, we are going to have the consequences to that uh, working on the flesh. We don't, God doesn't, uh, you know, exempt us. Those who sow to the Spirit will reap everlasting life. We will reap the life. We will reap. If we continue in the things of God, we continue the things in the Spirit, then we're, we, are, we are not going to, these things uh, that try to get into our flesh, you know, are going to, they're, 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 they're not going to stay because you are, you are putting what is necessary into your spirit. Let God arise and his enemies scatter. So when God arises in you, when that spirit arises in you, when that spirit is manifested in you, when it is taking dominion in your life, <coughs> God's enemies are going to flee. And you're going to reap everlasting life. You're going to reap life here on earth and everlasting life. You're going to reap the freedoms that God has provided. It says uh, in uh, Luke 4.18, let's, let's get some scriptures, because my teaching wasn't on my testimony, but I felt like, I even felt last night that the Lord was going to, you know, that this, this was the direction he was going to go, because it's not something that I tend to, I have a tendency to talk about. I mean, writing in this book was the first time I ever talked about it in 20, 20 years because it was, so it was 2002 when I got delivered. And so and I just kept it to myself and kept it to the, only to the people that are close to me. Never took it outside of that. But if I'm going to teach on demonology, then... I gotta let people know that I know exactly what people are going through. I, I've, I've been there, done that, was had the same mind as everybody else going into it. But God had to change my mind. He had to change my direction and my thoughts so I could be free. And I'm so glad. And my heart is fixed because of it. I'm not wavering in my decision for God. I'm not carnal, going spiritual and carnal. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not. A, you know a. a you know a wayfarer Christian. You know I. I have been solid, and faithful to the process. I have been committed. You know I'm not hot or or cold. I mean I'm. I'm not cold. I'm hot. I'm not luke, a lukewarm Christian. I'm not. I take this very serious. And it's because of what I've, I experienced. This is why I take it so seriously. And and it has it is it has rooted me in the things of God more than anything in church in all the life I had in any teaching I've ever had cannot take place of the experience that I had with God. And this experience with God 
has kept me and has brought, because that wasn't the last trial I've ever went through. That's not the last difficulty I've ever experienced. That's not the last uh, uh, disappointing thing in my life. There has been more and more tragedies in my life and more difficult times in my life. But because of that has rooted me and grounded me no, and the, having that experience in my life has not made me want to waver from my relationship with God. I have not wavered on my commitment to God because I know from a shadow of a doubt. I don't theorize. I know. And I know he came to deliver me and he came to deliver us all. And the Bible says in Luke 4, 18, that he, this is exactly what Yeshua came to do. What did he came to do? To set the captive free. It says uh, 4.18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent and to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captive. See, you know, deliverance didn't take place until Yeshua came. There was no manifestation of evil spirits or unclean spirits until Yeshua uh, walked the earth. Because Yeshua was, is the pathway to our deliverance. It is through his blood, through the anointing. He was filled with the spirit without measure. So he was working and operating in the kingdom of heaven that was outside of the kingdom of darkness, outside of this carnal world. And so when he was in contact with the leper, when he was in contact with the, the paralyzed men, the deaf and dumb spirits, when he was confronted with all the unclean spirits, and the people that were plagued with them, they had to flee. Because he came to set the captives free. To liberate us from the kingdom of darkness. From, from, and, and from the law that has put that, those, those demons into authority over our flesh. Now we walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And we don't, we're, we are walking in the law of the spirit in Christ Jesus that, uh, that, re, that takes care of the spirit man, that, that, that conforms the spirit man, that is, that is raising up the spirit man so that the flesh can die. Because when the flesh dies, those demonic spirits have to leave. If there's no flesh, then there is no operation for demons to to work in the flesh. So he's made a way that you don't have to live according to the flesh, but now you can live according to the spirit and that you can eliminate the powers of the flesh, the, this body of death that we, that we so all have. We all have this body of death that we have to contend with. But if we put it to death, those spirits that reside in that flesh are going to cease no longer. They have no body to operate in. It says, preach deliverance to the captive and the recovering of the sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable, acceptable year of the Lord. So what we reap in our flesh can be eliminated and destroyed and, and cease because we work no longer because Yeshua came to destroy the works of the flesh, came to destroy the, the, the governing, ruling entity that is over the flesh. And now we, everything that we have sowed in the flesh now can be eliminated from our lives, can be destroyed. We, this is why we come into a new and living way. Free from this, the, the, the controlling factors of the, that reside in our flesh. But to be free from the flesh, we've got to understand these are controlling spirits that control us in the flesh and that are trying to defile us, spirit, soul, and body. Keep thyself pure, to, uh, Paul said to Timothy. Keep thyself pure, undefiled. 
from the world, from the, from the demonic, from the people around you that are housing these demons. Keep yourself pure from the doctrines of demons so that we do not have to be uh, engaging with demons so they don't get into our soul. And it says in Isaiah 50, is it 59? Because this is the, a prophetic word. It says, because you, this is exactly what Yeshua came to do to liberate us from the body of death. It says, and for me, this is my covenant with him, which, which says the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee and my words, which I have put in their mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of thy mouth or thy seed, nor out of thy mouth of thy seed seed, says the Lord forever and ever. So it, words are spirit and, the, and their lives. So these are, this is why our, the, our words and to be delivered from demonic uh, forces we must use our words we must confess our sins and he is faithful to cleanse us forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so we are we are to be uh and it, it, they must come out of our mouth just like when i was going through my deliverance it took the word of god coming out of my mouth the things that were laid dormant like seeds this is like so prophetic because so, the, the Holy Spirit was bringing them into my remembrance and they were coming out of my mouth to halt the demons, to stop them at their tracks, to keep them at bay so I could have uh, just a little a reprieval, have a little relief. Mm -hmm. Even though I was weary in the battle and I was struggling and I was tiring and, and he was wearing me down, still took the word of God, that seed that was residing in me, that was planted in me by by uh, by my uh, parents, by by my faithfulness in church when I went to church. Because those seeds were life; those seeds were they were true, and and, and these were the words that uh, brought me deliverance and, and and brought me freedom. And they were weapons of warfare. They were my defense. I used the word of God as an offense to keep them under control. And so I was using the words of the Lord. And it says in Isaiah 61, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings, good news, the gospel. What is gospel? The basara. The gospel is the meat. We are to eat of his flesh and drink his blood. We are to be partakers of his, of his body because it's his body and blood that is going to liberate us from the, the controlling factors and the controlling entities in our lives. He, and these, this is why he poured out his blood upon the earth so that we could receive of his blood, of his body. We become part of his nature. And once his nature is being formed up inside of us, those demons have no place they have no they have nowhere to operate in so god even lifts uh, uh you know even through our actions and our choices god will start allowing this uh the this image and this nature of christ to form up in us and that in itself will also free us from demonic spirits and it says uh up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captive and to open the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord of the day uh, of the day of his vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. So there is a day, there is a day where God's vengeance is coming, going to be coming up on these spirits because it says in uh let's see it says in luke i'm gonna go to luke 4 and 33 and 30 it says it says it, oh, so it says it start with the four starting with the 30 uh, 32 first and it says and they were astonished at his doctrine 
for the words was, was with powers. His words were with power to deliver them. See, even at the preaching of, of Yeshua's words, just the preaching and his authority caused the uh, demonic realm to go fanatic and started to liberate the, the hearers by the word of God. And it says, and in the synagogues, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean de devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know that uh, these who are the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of thee. And when the devil had thrown him down, threw the men down, see there was a, the, the enemy reacted in that person. It wasn't the person that went down, threw himself down. It was the spirit in them that threw. So that's why I said, your body's going to react. Your body, if, you, if you're controlled by a spirit, it's going, to, it's going to jerk, it's going to shake, it's going to convulse, it's going to react to that spirit because now that spirit is being, uh, being aroused. And it's and it's being and and it doesn't want to leave. So what it does, it it uh, it strikes out at the person that that they say is the, their house, mm -hmm. and and they don't want to leave, but they have to leave because the authority of Yeshua coming to set the captive free, has come to deliver us. His power, His authority, His all power has been given unto Him, and that spirit knew it had to leave, and it came out, and that and that and so. And the Bible says that they walk in dry places in the earth. And, because, and they're always looking for a vessel to reside in. They're, you know, so they're, they, they walk among us. And so anyways, what I was going to say is they said, see, it says right here that in I, uh, Isaiah, that proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. So there's vengeance. But then you'd hear that spirit say, what did that spirit say? It, it, it's, it's not time. It's not time for that vengeance. It's not time for that, for that recompense. You know, we are, we, we are, we, we have the right. We have the right to be in these vessels because these vessels are sold under sin. So it is not our time for the judgment of God. So, but they knew that Yeshua was the liberator. They knew that he came to liberate the people. And what, how did they know that? How did they know that it was Yeshua that was going to be the liberator? What was said? What was, what was portrayed? What was written down? What, what was, because they say they, they just don't know these things just to know them. Things have to be said. Things have to be written down. Things have to be put in action. There's got to be a prophetic word that is that is that has signaled their demise and their judgment. And I was I was praying and I was asking God, I was like, what you know, where in scripture? Because it has to be in the Tanakh. It has to be in the Old Testament that to for them to say these things to Yeshua. They know that the, the time has not yet come, that Yeshua is going, not yet fulfilled his, his, all his uh, mandated requirements to bring in this vengeance. So they, they knew that he had power and authority. And now since Yeshua has been ascended, now he is at the right hand of the Father, this power and authority has been given to the believers. And so, and now, but if he, if, if Satan can keep us deceived and keep us thinking that we're, we don't, uh, we don't have to uh, constantly be in battle with them and, and, and expel them and drive them out and to subdue them, then they're going to have full reign in the earth. They're going to have full reign in, in people's vessels. They're going to have full reign because the Bible says that Satan works through the children of disobedience mm -hmm. and the children of wrath. So, and, and even 
professing believers because they have no idea that these demons reside in them. And they, they think, oh, well, I, I, I made a confession of faith and that's all I need to do. And they don't, and they never go war. They never go to war with their soul. They never go war with the devil. They just kind of put on a form of godliness, but they deny the power within. So these demons are, li are living high off of the flesh of men. They're living, they're just enjoying their lives at the expense of men. At the expense, because what does sin do? Sin brings death. So what are people doing? They're dying early deaths. Because what does the book of the law does? The book of the law has put them in power, put them in authority to condemn sin in the flesh, to execute it and bring it into justice. And people who commit sin in their bodies continuously without any kind of, uh, of deliverance or any kind of reprieve or any kind of uh, conviction or just living life, they are going to they're they're going to uh, die an early death. People who are just living for self are going to end up dying an early death because they are they are uh, putting things in their bodies and doing things in their body that is bringing on the condemnation that has been given by the book of the law to destroy them, to wither them out, to uh, wane them away. And that's why the uh, expect uh, the life expectancy is being shortened yeah, every, right. all the time. That's what I said on the news. But it says in Daniel, and it's uh, it says Daniel seven four that the that they know that judgment is coming, and that this beast system and the and this <laughs> and the controlling factors of the beast. And the nature of the beast is is going to be judged. Because it says in Daniel 7 and 14, it says, and it says, make sure. It says, after this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stomped the residue with the feet of it, and was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns. So we are being controlled by a beast that is has has branched itself out and has extended itself out. It has seven heads with 10 horns and it has it has engulfed the earth and men uh, identify with the beast mm -hmm. and behave like the beast. And so, and it's becoming more and more ruthless as, as generations go on, as time proceeds, the bees that, you know, cause you know, in Daniel, they're talking about four kingdms or four bee systems, imperial kingdoms that, uh, that has control and dominated the earth. But this last beast is going to be fierce, which is being fueled by the, uh, Spirit of pride, the the king of pride, Leviathan. Mm -hmm. That he and the Bible says in Job that he was, uh, you know, he is the king of pride. Leviathan is. So, so he is a beast, and so men are identify and act and behave as beasts because the Bible says, you know, in Ecclesiastes that men are nothing more than beasts when they act and work in their abased nature. And so it says, and so, the, and so these, this beast that is forming up in the earth that is taking, it's, it's, it's manifesting itself. It's been growing up in the unseen realm, hidden from plain sight. And now it's going to come and be revealed and manifest itself. It, and God has set these things in order, but he's going to judge it all. And those who align themselves with the beast will also will be judged with the beast and the demons that are all that are all in this uh, this kingdom, all that is under the the tendency, the uh, the kingdom and the hierarchies of of the principalities and powers and rulers and authorities in in dark places 
in high places, all are going to be affected when the vengeance of God comes. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, so it says, um, where eyes are like the, I says, and I consider the horn, and behold, there came upon among them another little horn, before whom there were three, and the first horn plucked up in the rooted, and behold, in this horn were eyes like eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. And I, I say this is the anti-Messiah, a hybrid, because God doesn't call him a man. He calls it an image that looks like a man. But he's got, he is an anthropos. He is partly man, but he's not fully man. But he's got eyes and a mouth that speaks for him. But in our perception, we're going to see him as a man. But he's not fully man because Satan is going to inhabit him. It says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. All thrones, all dominions, all authorities, all powers are going to be cast down. This hierarchy of the demonic, satanic kingdom is going to be brought down, and the demons sit at the low spectrum of this demonic kingdom. They, they're at the, they're at the uh, ground surface in, in, the, in the hierarchies of, of this demonic, satanic regime. Does that make sense? And I said, Behold, till the thrones were all cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garments were white as snow, and the hair of his head like of pure wood. This is describing Yeshua being in the Ancient of Days. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his will as the burning fire. So these demons were saying that it's not yet time because you are not in the role. You, you're, you're not in this place of authority yet. You're not been lifted up. You come lowly, humble, as a humble servant. They did not know that he came to redeem man and bring man into hit the kingdom of God. But he has not yet been seated on his throne. Does that make sense? In this position where all things have been made subject to his, under his feet. So it's not time yet, those unclean spirits, right? It's not time, Yeshua. We know you're the man, but you're not on your throne. You're not in, in the power and authority to cast us into utter destruction. You can't, you can't avenge on us. The demons were saying, you can't avenge on us. We have to leave the vessel because your authority and power, but the vengeance of God has not yet, is, is, not, is not yet to be. That's what they were saying. But they were trying to, uh, to uh, because God, Yeshua did not want men to know because it was not yet time. But just like the evil spirit, they were trying to, uh, you know, they were trying to proclaim. They were to out. They're trying to out him because they were trying to disrupt the plan of God. So they were trying to say things. And which what do, do demons do when they start to speak? They try to distract you. They try to divert you. They try to get you off course. They try to bring fear. They try to bring anger. They try to, you know, manipulate with your mind and emotions to, so that, to get you away from them. They try to distract you. And this is what they were trying to do. Because Yeshua had not yet made himself known who he was. And them knowing that this prophecy in Daniel knew that he was not yet ready to execute vengeance on them. And it says, uh, their hair of, uh, it says, and the Ancient of Days did sit with, uh, whose garments was white as snow, and his hair of, uh, his head like the pure wool, his throne was like a fiery flame, and his will as a burning fire. <clears throat> a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousands stood before him. And judgment was set, and the books were open. And I beheld them because the voice of a great words which the horn spake, and I beheld even till the beast 
the beast was slain, that old serpent, that dragon of old, the Leviathan, has not yet been slain, has not yet been destroyed. So, but Yeshua has come to destroy that beast. Behold, even till the beast was slain and his body is destroyed and given to the burning flame. This is when Leviathan is destroyed. And concerning the rest of the beast, the rest of the beast, beast of the field, the beast in our nature, the beast, you know, the Bible, the, you know, the, whether the uh, children of Israel, what did they t instruct him? You will take the land little by little unless the, the beast will overtake you. Well, in a spiritual metaphor, the beast that reside in the soul will overtake you if, if you do not little by little deliver yourself. Little by little... God delivers you. That's why he delivers you and doth deliver you because little by little he's gaining dominion in your soul. Little by little you're taking back your soul. Little by little you're taking possession of your soul. Because if if you he, if Yeshua came and did it all at once, then your whole personality will crumble. Your you, you a, 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 the human body is not uh, capable of, uh, of of being able to go under that type of pressure, mm -hmm. under that type of fear. So little by little, God makes these things known. Little by little, he delivers us So because he knows that the weakness and the, the, the weakness in men, our, our fragile demeanor cannot handle these spiritual forces all at once. God can come at once and destroy them all, but he knows that we are, we are just weak vessels. So little by little, it says, and sir, uh, concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for the season. So dominion, they were, were, they were taken away, yet their lives were prolonged, the do, dominions, for, see, for a season and a time. So I'm going to read uh, on that dominion because dominion means demons. And I'm going to get into that. It says, I saw in the night vision and beheld one like the Son of Man, which is Yeshua, the, coming as man, as, as, the, as the likeness of man, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, which is the, the uh, Godhead, the Ancient of the Triune, Yohe, Vav, He, the Godhead, the, uh, you know, the, the, that it is a polarity of God, but now Yeshua is on the forefront. He's stepping into that role of becoming King of Kings and Lord of Lords. God is bringing him up in preeminent so that all of the satanic kingdom can be subdued. It says, it says, which, it says I saw in the night vision and behold, one like the son of man come with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people nations and language should serve him his dominion yeshua's dominion sequesters the demonic the dominion of the satanic kingdom yeah which shall not pass away his his dominion will not pass away his dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So Yeshua's kingdom, which resides down, which is in the unseen, destroys the powers of darkness and destroys their dominion, their powers. And in my book, the last... Uh, over Moses' dead body, I go into more detail about demons, and meaning uh, domain. They, mm -hmm. they take dominion. Yeah. They're, they're, it's a root word, dominion, domain, and the word demon comes from that word, domain, which is take, they take possession for Satan. They take a power for Satan. They, they, they uh, they they sequester the 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 things here on earth that to to they lord over them 
and they control them for their master Satan. So that's why we have to come out from underneath the world and its dominion and the powers of this world so that we are free from the demonic entities because Yeshua's kingdom is not of this world. Right. Yeshua's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom and his dominion never ends because it says his dominion is everlasting. Mm -hmm. It's eternal. And we deal with these demonic forces spiritually, not carnally. And if you are just dealing with demons naturally, you're going to fail. You can't just like Job. Job was doing all the right things, but he had not yet come into a spiritual reality where he could come into a place where you should, where he was, where he could come into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Because you must come into the power of the kingdom of heaven to get out from under that dominion. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go. It says, <coughs> let's go. Satan's messengers. Let's say, uh, beloved, let's go to Jude 1, 3, and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there, of, there are certain men crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Satan's messengers have always moved stealthily among believers to seduce them into doctrines, errors that appeal to the soul. Our warfare is not with flesh and blood, but Satan's deception appeals to man's carnal nature. The gospel of Jesus Christ offers saints a cup of affliction, adversity, uh, Jeremiah 11, 4, 4, 2 Timothy 2 and 12, Mark 10 and 38, Hebrews 13 and 3. So we, we go through a furnace of affliction. Uh, says our human natures can't conceptualize that y'all's love for the saints would bring them through a furnace of affliction. This misunderstanding of y'all's love causes many to err in the faith. Jews admonish saints to contend for the faith because beholding the holding to a firm faith in y'all is what Satan wars against. Faith is based on y'all's word alone, not feeling or perceptions. Our uh, helmet of salvation is our protection from lies which bombard our minds from the natural or the spiritual war world. We must continue in faith, trusting y'all's word, despite any earthly impositions or burdens. Believers' trials imposed by Satan, this world, and others are not necessarily, not necessarily their fault or causes are caused by their own sins. The doctrines that expect y'all to shield his children from all hardship is unreal, it's unrealistic. So this doctrine saying that we were shielded from any kind of adversity, pain, trials, suffering, and a lot of things that are being promoted in the Christian faith that God only wants good for you and you never have to endure sorrow is a lie from hell because mm -hmm. it takes affliction like my f affliction to change my course, to change my direction. Right. It took that to get me into the realm of faith, <laughs> real faith, true faith. I was living in a, a, a counterfeit faith, believing things that were, that were, oh, God was only for my good. I never wanted to suffer or deal with suffering until God got said that you know you the, the christian walk a true christian walk is suffering the first thing that god showed me going through a lot is that i in the church never got growing up in other you know in my adult life and when i really took things seriously at, at times i th all, all i wanted was the blessings of god the goodness of god i wanted the um you know i wanted god to take care of me I wanted God to support me. I wanted God to give me the blessings. I wanted God to, to make my life happy. 
I, I mean, those were the reasons why I served God. I wanted the blessings. I wanted what he could provide for me. I wanted to get out of my trials and tribulations and my afflictions. And I was trying to use God to, uh, to, to make that happen for me. Until the realization that, that God had to take me through certain situations and circumstances in my life and pain and sorrow to get that doctrine of demon out of me. And the first thing, because going through something that I, you know, I'm not going to share today, but going through something uh, that was very traumatic in my life took me to a scripture that I, I probably read, read a hundred times. But it became real. And that scripture was, those who suffer, those, those, uh, those who suffer, no, you enter the kingdom of God with much tribulation. That, that was the scripture that it was like, was an eye opener to me. Because when I was going through the mo one of the most difficult things in my life, had lost a, a loved one. Had my, li my life took a, a shift, a turn, and I couldn't understand it because I, all I could think was God's blessing. God wants to provide. God wants to bless. God wants to heal. God wants to deliver. God wants to, you know, make your life good. And when he told me that you enter the kingdom of God with much tribulation and suffering, that was like a paradigm shift for me. That was a, a slap in the face. That was a realization that must have taken place in my life for me to endure the sufferings that I had to endure. That I was not crazy. <laughs> that God did not hate me. That God expect us to go through the sufferings in this life. And I, and I wasn't being singled out as an object of affliction. Where was God? Where is God? Where, where, why am I going through these things? Thinking that the, that these people had put in me thinking that everything is beautiful, that my life should be good when it's not, you know, and made me just felt like a hamster wheel. I was constantly going on a hamster wheel, believing in Things, not saying that God doesn't bless us, believe me, because I've experienced the blessings of God. I experienced the miracles of God. I experienced His goodness. But I've also experienced the other side. And that was the affliction. God took me into many trials of, uh, of affliction. And so anyways, that was, that was a doctrine of demon that that had been embedded in my soul this uh this word faith movement the prosperity message the, the uh, these things that are being told to us over the airwaves all the time the word of faith movement and all this stuff about unrealistic things the, that was a doctrine of demon that got was embedded in my soul that had to be removed that had to be had to be changed my mindset, my, my belief had to be changed. And there is a demon that resides over these doctrines that keep us bound and keep us living and believing in fantasy mm -hmm. and not in reality. But anyways, on, enough on that. As, and so anyways, the doctrine that accept, uh, accepts y'all to shield his children from hardship is unrealistic. We must be overcomers of the flesh, devil, and this world. In my experience, hardships were not always a result of my sin or my negligence. I was affected by a world of sinners. Satan attacked me in my thoughts and emotions with demonic oppression. I had to bring those assess accessory thoughts to the word and believe y'all. Words despite what I saw, heard, thought, or felt. So I had to believe God's word over what I believed before, my perceptions. I had to believe God's word over my feelings or my thoughts. I I had to trust in God. I I said one time, I said, God has taken me to, a, you know, he's taken me from faith to faithfulness. 
I, I lived in accordance to the word of faith and believing in the uh, in confession and naming and claiming and professing and speaking words of life. You know, I, I went through all that in my life. But that was, I was, I didn't believe anything bad could happen. I only wanted good, good. On, and if I had a negative thought, then somehow that was, that was the devil. I was living in a fantasy. And God, God had to take me and, and reteach me. He had to teach me new things. And he, and one thing he taught me was faithfulness. You got to come out of that word of faith, that confession of, of believing and, and proclaiming and prosticating over yourself to the realization of living my word in spite of your circumstances. What you see here on the, on the natural, you must live in faithful obedience to my word. And that's, and I, and so I always say, I went to faith to faithfulness. And I had to believe God even in the midst of trying times. Uh, it says, in my experience, hardships were not always a result of my sins, but, or my negligence. And we'll go down. So, y'all, I had to believe the word despite what I saw, heard, thought, or felt. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. For though we walk not, we walk in the flesh, we are not, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down the strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. In the strongest concordance, imagination is logomos, is compulsion or reasoning. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 and 7, because of the carnal mind is at war into me against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither in decamping. The carnal mind reasonings are against Yah's way. The enemy against God's ways. So the enemy, the enemies of God and human nature wars in the flesh against submitting to the righteousness of the divine law. Yeshua taught followers to lay your life down and to deny yourself. But the natural carnal mind directly opposes such commands. Humanity wants vindication, retaliation, retribution for life's assaults and tragedies. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. And took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Praise y'all. Thank you, Yeshua. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he, uh, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. So when Yeshua resurrection, when he raised from the dead, he put all powers, authorities, principalities, and all Satan's dominion under his feet. So you've got to elevate. You've got to all y'all. You've got to come up to where he's at. You've got to be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So you can also put all of God's enemies under your feet. You've got to be, be lifted up in the spirit man. If the spirit man is not limited to natural things. I'm not talking about astral projecting. I'm talking about a heart that is connected to the spirit that you're getting divine revelation and knowledge and understanding to know what is is affecting your life. Mm -hmm. So you'll have discernment. You got you you can have words of knowledge. You can have understanding that is outside of this natural realm because it's coming from a source from the Holy Spirit that is connected from the heavenly host that brings that that gives you the power and authority to bring all things under your feet because you are being lifted up in god by faith mm -hmm. not by mental ascension but by faith by believing in your heart 
The, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart, these mountains can be removed. You've got to believe in your heart, not from your mind. They've got to be real in your heart. You've got to know, you've got to walk in this faithful obedience to God. You've got to come out of faith to faithfulness and believe God and let him walk you through life and where there are good and bad, where there's blessings and cursings, and you got to deal with both of them at the same time. And so that you can be lifted up in your spirit, man, to bring all things under dominion, under the, under, under the authority and power of Yeshua that he's provided for all of us through his salvation. Hallelujah. I would not be free today if it wasn't for Yeshua's sacrifice. Right. Without his blood, without his dominion, Without his preeminence, putting all things under his feet, triumphing over them, nailing that law, those ordinances, that this this realm, and putting it all under the feet, they have no more dominion over me. Mm -hmm. I don't belong to this uh, worldly kingdom. I don't belong to the satanic kingdom. I belong to the kingdom of heaven, and I get my dictates from him and my uh, uh, edicts from the from the kingdom of heaven, and I obey from the heart. And I live by faith in him. I live in faith. I'm hid in him. We are hid in Christ. He, shever, he covers us and shelters us mm -hmm. and protects us. And the believer's war, is, okay, it says, uh, So Satan is the prince and the powers of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The believer's warfare is not physical, but spiritual. Even though spirit, uh, believers contend uh, mostly with each other, Satan's warfare is in the heavenly heavenlies to stop people from being united with Messiah. The enemy between Yah and mankind was abolished by the blood of Yeshua. The wall of partition, which was the law of Moses. Moses was the mediator. He, he stood in between you and God, but now because of Yeshua, we come in by his blood and we now come boldly into the throne room of God to have this intimate walk with him. These were not, these were just added. But anyway, uh, abolished by the blood of Christ, the wall of partition, the law of Moses and the Aaronic priestly order now has been reconciled in Christ for all who believes and draw nears to God. Satan wars with the saints to prevent them from drawing near to the Father God. Demons are part of this warfare in the soul, flesh, and in the flesh. The earthbound entities that humans contend with daily in their members. Demons profane the environment surrounding us through carnal flesh and doctrines of demons. All of humanity is oppressed and demonized by demons coming through the avenue of sin. Deliverance ministry all agree that sin is the open door for de demonization or possession. So every demo uh, d minister that deals with demons know that you cast out the, the acts of sin, the attitude of sin, the participation of sin. So if you've got lust, you are delivered from the spirit of lust. You're not delivered from another uh, Nephilim, which probably had a name. That probably was a, uh, you know, that had a, that had a soul himself. No, you're delivered from sin. A Nephilim is a, it, it was a hybrid person that had a soul. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That that died, that got destroyed. Probably their spirit went to the other side, and I think the occult realm uh, tries to uh, invoke them. Across, this is why the principalities and powers and rulers are across the other divide. And I get into it in my other books, like in Job, that God put a trap there to protect us from the fallen angels and from the principalities and powers and authorities. So Nephilims that and the Rephilim that died off could have just perished in the flood. They could have perished in the war. With the Israelites, they could have perished um, in hell, or they could be part of the hierarchy of the satanic kingdom. 
there's no evidence to say right. what, 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 what really happened to him. And I don't endorse the Book of Enoch. I say, I say the Book of Enoch and all those other resources are second witnesses of things that could or could not happen. But I don't take them legit and doctrinal. I don't, I don't make doctrines out of these uh, 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 of the books of the Apocrypha. I use the Word of God to give me doctrinal clarity that I live my life on, not anything else. Those could be used for second witnesses, but at first, the foundation must be found in Scripture first. Right. The source has to come from, from the Word of God. Your, your doctrine and belief has to come from the Word of God and it alone, and, and everything else is secondary. You, it is. It could happen. It's opinion. Could or could not. We don't know. There's too much debate on it. And there's too much negligence and ne uh, negative things that are taken out of. If you do a study on the Apocrypha, there's a lot more negative things in, resides in it that are contrary to the scriptures. Or that are in contradiction to the scripture than they are in coherence to the scripture. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And so anyway, so I don't believe demons come from uh, the Nephilim. I, I, and I, I, I believe just what scripture says. They're earthbound. And they resided from the earth and they came from God. Because everything that God makes is alive. Everything that God pronounces is alive. And I can prove that. Because in the Old Testament, there's not very much on the subject, but the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16 and 14 through 16 that an evil spirit sent from God was given uh, to Saul, was put upon Saul. So God sent an evil spirit after Saul had rebelled and, and took, took away the Holy Spirit and gave him an evil spirit. And it said it came from God. And also 1 Kings. And we may look at these later. 1 Kings 22, 20 and 23. It said that a lying spirit. From God. Came into the prophets. And I don't believe God. Uh, ordained, I don't believe God ordained it. In a way that it has to do with his regime. Or hit the kingdom of life. I believe just like Job, the sons of God or the angels or the kingdom of God uh, or the kingdom of darkness has to go and get permission from God to be able to attack like they, uh, you know, God's, you know, God uh, had mentioned in uh, Job that have you not considered my servant Job? So he was enticing Satan to go and, and bring him into a, a, a testing, a time of testing. So God initiated that. Does that make sense? You have all initiated, but it did not come from the realm of, of righteousness. It was because God is sovereign. God is it has all power, all authority. He's om, omnipotent, omnipotency, or what's that thing? Omnipotent. Uh, yeah, omnipotent, uh, omnipresent, all knowing, all, all powerful. You know, he's he's everything, and uh, you know, God is all and in all, and nothing gets by God. I believe that He allowed these things to happen. He did. He didn't. Uh, he did not. Uh, and he allowed the uh, the reverse because they would not like in the second in first king. He uh, allow a lying spirit to come and speak. That is that makes sense because they were already in rebellion. They have already uh, spoke lies, which fabricated an entity out of the iniquity of that, fabricated a lying spirit. And now there is something that now controls a lying tongue, which is a lying spirit. And that lying spirit uh, uh, went before God and asked permission 
to go into the mouth of the prophet to deceive a rebellious king. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That God was using that lie in spirit to bring judgment <coughs> on, a, on Ahab. Because he would not, what did the Bible says that he would bring a strong delusion? Mm -hmm. uh, th those who believe not the truth, but believe a lie, God will send a strong delusion. So did, so it came from God, but it came out of the realm of darkness. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Because they are still submitted to the kingdom of righteous. They, you know, even though God has given them authority and power through the book of the law to, to have dominion, still God is sovereign and they, they don't, they just, they still have to go under his ranks. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They have to go under his power. They still have to, uh, God will send them a strong delusion. God will send a lying spirit. God will send an evil spirit to, to judge the sinner. It came from God, but it was, didn't orchestrate from God. It orchestrated out of the sin. It developed and was fabricated out of the sin that it was created from the act of sin. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It was created out of the act of sin. So if a person lies and there's lying prophets, they made a choice because all dominion was given to man. Right from Adam and Eve, all all dominion was given to him. He he was to to uh, rule the earth, right? But when he when he sinned, when he took upon that iniquity, and when he started making his own choices, when he started living independently from God, and he started acting in in this nature of iniquity, mm -hmm. so that's the mystery of iniquity. Because he was acting in his, in the iniquity, these are offshoots of that iniquity. A lying spirit, a fornicating spirit, an adulterous spirit, a hoarding spirit. Do you see what I mean? So every time they would partic in the participate in the kingdom of darkness and they would act in, a sin, in these sins, fabricated and develop these spirits called dominion that became a ruling vice war basically over that sin and over the property of that sin which was the property of that vessel mm -hmm. does that make sense i'm going to get into that because that's what demons mean dominion domain they take territory for the kingdom of darkness does that make sense? So, so when we look at God in the in the Old Testament sending an evil spirit unto Saul and sending a lying spirit, I want to clarify that God, all God can bring forth this life, all God can bring forth this righteousness and holiness. But because he is sovereign and ruler of all the universe, and he has given dominion over to man. And now Satan has, uh, has taken that authority because man has addicated that authority. It is the sin and that iniquity that was a found in the cherub, in, in, in that entity of sin, because he, Satan, it was found in him. This is a spiritual force, like black, like black matter, for instance. What you hear in the universe, there is black matter. And it's it's a and it and these are where the demonic forces, or entities or spirits in in this cold dark matter, mm -hmm. that is it outside our dimension. But they but you can't see them. But they have they reside in this matter. You do see what I mean? Mm -hmm. But they are breasts. They're pneumatic. They're not they they're not something that we can tangibly hold or feel or touch. But they are, but they're there, and they can't, and they were developed out of the that that matter of sin, the action of sin, the because when sin went forth, it conceived something. 
Does that make sense? When sin goes forth, it conceives and it produces and it reproduces. And, the, and they get into the soul, they get into this matter. We are physical beings that get into, so they have to be in a, in, in some kind of physical state to operate in. Does that make sense? But let me get finished because we're running kind of late. It says, all of humanity is oppressed and demonized by demons coming through the avenue of sin. Deliverance ministry all agree that sin is an open door for dem demonization. Romans 6, 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law. You're not under the book of the law. You're not under the curse of the law. As long as you stay under the curse of the law, the, uh, Satan has dominion over you. Because that was the that was the law that went for that gave them the authority to de condemn them in the flesh. Blessings and curses choose this day. You can choose life, which is blessing, or death and curses. Mm -hmm. It was given to them as a choice. So, but that law. Is, is that govern is the governance over those entities. It puts them in action. It gives them the rule. It gives them the dominion. It gives them the authority and power to come and arrest you and control you and take you at will. Just like what they did to me. They took me at will when I wasn't even expecting it. I wasn't participating in sin. I was taking my son to the mall to go get a haircut. And all of a sudden, I was attacked. These forces came inside of, and 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 attacked me. Where I, I fear, I was overwhelmed with fear. And from that time forth, I could barely could get home that day from the mall. I could barely get home uh, because of a, 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 a sudden fear came upon me. A sudden attack came upon me that crippled me. That literally. <laughs> immobilized me and I had to call my husband and say I don't know what happened something came over me I need I need for you to come and pick me up I don't know what happened to me and from that day forth for four months I was in total torment so it came upon sudden it apprehended me because I was not covered by the blood of Yeshua I was not living under the law of the spirit I was carnal I was a lukewarm Christian. Do you see what I mean? I was not obeying God. I was not taking these things seriously. So, uh, so, so it says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So Yeshua liberates us. He is the arbitrator of grace, and he gives us mercy, and he gets us out from underneath that dominion. Mm -hmm. So we could come under him. Mm -hmm. Satan is bound in the unseen realm. Satan rules in the unseen realm through demonized children or of disobedience. Satan and his fallen principalities and powers do not walk the earth in bodily form. The high-ranking fallen ones attack mostly through earthbound demons, which must have a host to operate within. Demons are earthbound, and when operating in a human host can cause the host to bring fallen eternal spirits being across from the other scene so so when demons are in you and they are demon and you're demonly charged and you're participating in demonic occult things you can bring stronger demons that are are that are held back from the from human but through spiritual laws and through different sacrifices you can bring in stronger demons to control you in your vessels and it says, uh, so they can bring, and it takes these demons inside of you to bring in more demons and more evil spirits and principalities and powers. It says that the hosts bring in fallen uh, uh, eternal spirit beings across from the unseen realm into the physical realm. One method is by unlawful, ungodly use of blood. 
The life of the flesh is in the blood, Leviticus 17, 11. This ungodly use of blood opens the gateway and allows the transference of principalities and powers from the heavenly unseen realm into the earthly seen realm. So in Strong's Concordance, dominion is kairotes or kairos means master, kairos means master or supreme authority by implication the master or lord so demons uh they have authority but their master is satan but what the bible says those who give their who participate in sins you are subject or you're a slave to sin so sin becomes your master right. so demons become your master when you participate in sin does that make sense mm -hmm. The word devil in 1 Timothy 4, 1 means demonic beings by extension, deities, devils, or gods. So they are spirit beings. They are, so the Bible says everything that is seen is temporal. Everything unseen, they are spiritual. So they are devils could be a part of the fallen hierarchy of the satanic kingdom. That's what it means. So demonic or demons can mean deity, devils, but they're on the lower ranking of devils. The demons of these spirits is from the word domain. So the root word for demons and the, where the word demons come from is from domain, dominion. Webster Dictionary, domain is an area of territory or controlled by a ruling, a ruler or or a government, a specified fear of activity or, or knowledge. So in the Webster Dictionary, domain is an area of territory controlled by a ruler or a government specified in a certain sphere or activity or knowledge of that domain. Like they, they have that, that entity has domain. Like if you own a property, you have you have it you have domain you have possession of that property that belongs to you and then nobody can come and live in that property or come and and make a tent in your front yard because that property is, is has been assigned to you because you have legal rights you have deeds that and contracts that give you dominion and residence in that property on that property so you have domain but as we know, the United States and the governments have ultimate domain of wow. everything in, in, in the United States. And all territory belongs to the federal government. Yes. So, uh, and they can, take, they can take your property mm -hmm. at will. And what is that called? <coughs> there is a word that, said, that I have to look it up, but... They could take your property at will, even though the deed you could have it paid for, bought, and uh, and 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 in your name, and owe nothing on it, and still they can come and take possession because all property, all authority, all land belongs to the U.S. government. Right. So it says we are a conduit to the spirit realm and the energy surrounding us will be attracted to what is inside our heart that is why two people can can connect without saying a word the attraction is coming from the spirit realm we can walk in a place and feel accepted or rejected without a word we are more sensitive to the realm of the spirit realm than what we think yeah. ephesians 6 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against wickedness in high places. Romans 6 and 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants, servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, rather of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. The strong cordon is servants or slave. You're bound to that. You're a slave to that sin. They're, they master over you. The demons are part of the kingdom of, of the gods, the god of this world. Satan, he is the god of this world. 
Y'all gave authority and dominion to Adam, but in the garden, Adam committed high treason and advocated that dominion to Satan. Demons act as officers that protect their that dominion or that domain for their master, for for their for the hierarchy of their of the satanic kingdom. Humanity is the territory demons want to bind for their master, Satan. Demons are not seen because they are each eternal spirits. All spirit beings are eternal, 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. Colossians 1 and 16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven, and that, see, all things were created by him, for him, and that nothing was made. Everything was made. So, the, the words are spirit. Words are life. Words are, you know, they can bring, you know, the Bible. Life and death are in the tongue. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll be justified or condemned by your tongue. So life take a form and they get into matter. And they, and they, and they set the course. The Bible says in James that, that the tongue sets the course of our lives. Mm -hmm. So blessings and cursing has been, been given to us and, and has given into uh, to this realm to bless us or curse us and they take form and they take and they take existence in our human vessels in our lives they're spirit beings they're, we can't see them with the naked eye but they control us they have a mind they have a will. They have. They have a, a, a. They have preferences. They have dislikes and likes, and they have. They have a. Uh, they. They. They are. They are intelligent. Everything that God makes is intelligent because it comes from a source that can only bring for life. Even though it was originated out of evil, it still can take the source, even though it thinks evil impure thoughts and has a, a, an evil intellect does that make sense mm -hmm. to scheme evil within humanity and schemes evil to destroy that which has been given over to satan this is why that we live in a world that is it's increasing as sin abounds mm -hmm. So does grace abound. Sin abounds. Grace abounds, but sin also abounds. It gets larger and larger. How does sin abound? Through these entities. They, they start to reproduce after their own kind. More sin that is in the environment, more that sin that is in operation, more sin takes form, and more sin becomes exceedingly sinful, and it becomes a... a abounding effect in our society and these entities re, uh, are alive and they will once they will be judged they're judged now for every believer who believes and wants to take the initiative to cast out the demons and to destroy them out of their lives we have that power and authority to to execute and judge them because we're under the power and authority of yeshua we can judge them. We can't condemn them. We, we can't act in vengeance against them. But we can push them back. We can destroy them to have any kind of lead weight in our life. They don't have to have fruit. They don't, they, they don't have to reproduce in our lives or in our generations. They don't, have to have, they don't have to run its course in our lives. God gives us the power. Yeshua by his blood gives us the power to stop and remove ourselves from their dominion. Because now he sets on high. And now we come under our master Yeshua. Under his law. Under his authority. That expels just like he did when he walked the earth. They started to tremble. Because his power what supersedes their power and their authority and one day they know that that man that was standing in front of them is going to sit in such a high place in heaven 
next to the Father, that all powers be given under him, that that man, the Son of Man, is going to destroy all of sin and death. All things will be destroyed by him. And also the Bible says, and I wrote in, at the judgment seat of Christ, every tongue will bow. Every tongue will confess. Every knee will bow. Every entity will bow to the Lordship and Master of Yeshua. They will be, they will not have dominion in the new earth that is, com that is coming. They will not have dominion in the kingdom of heaven. They will not have dominion in the, in, in the promised land of the spirit. They will not, they do not have dominion in the kingdom of God. Yeshua has all dominion and everlasting dominion. Mm -hmm. And he expels all works of darkness and all powers and authorities of darkness and demons that they, they, they are part of the powers of darkness, but they are on a lower scale. That's why the the occult world is trying to bring more powerful demons over yeah. to control mankind. They want the they want the the uh, weightier ones. They want the more uh, more domineering ones. The more ones that have the power to subdue man, because we can subdue demons. To, through our act of our will. But there's going to be times where they're bringing over powers that are going to be out of our scale. Mm -hmm. We will not we will not be able to resist without God, without the Holy Spirit living within us. We will not be able to resist the powers of darkness. But anyways, says, for by him were, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, and all things were created by and for him. Here we see the, that the ranking authorities in the hierarchies of Satan's kingdom, thrones, Lucifer or Satan, Leviathan or the serpent, dominion as demons, devils, or evil spirits. Principalities are angels and powers are more wicked and evil spirits. The dominion demons are devils, are earthbound in our physical realm, but can go into the heavenly realm via by more wicked spirits operating through souls of human vessels, like witches and warlocks. So I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna get into the the evil spirits and principalities and powers. I'm dealing with only the, the surface demonic entities of that reside in sin uh and they're going to be judged all of satan's kingdom is going to be judged because they have a prophecy written down in daniel that everyone that is under the uh, the hierarchy or the beast kingdom that that is that is attached itself to the to the old serpent the dragon leviathan and all the the entities and fallen angels and evil spirits and all that working on the unseen realm is going to are going to cease their coming a judgment. Vengeance our minds, saith God. And it, and there's going to be a day of vengeance that none of these things are going to reside. None of these things are going to to uh, live in our world. When we get when we get with Messiah, they don't have dominion, they don't have power, they don't have authority. We can we have the power in Yeshua to get rid of them. They don't have they do not reign in our life. We put ourselves under Yeshua, His authority, His power, His reign, His dominion. He is our master. He is our Lord, and He is the one that delivers us. And we have to we have to transfer to that authority to be able to be to to be uh, so we are not partakers of God's vengeance. And on that, I'm going to end. Amen.